It's the People's Podcast Show with Adrian Biddle, Melissa Bartlett, and you will Carrie Bigsby. It's your show. So tell us what you want to talk about. It's that the round table. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Man, oh man. It is another Wednesday, y'all. Mm-hmm. Another one. And I, and, and I love this day because I get to come on the Black Hollywood Square and just see all these beautiful people right here with us on right. At The Round Table Podcast Show. Yes, yes. Hello. <laughs> so uh, I get the uh, distinct opportunity and pleasure to to have these people on. Um, I have to introduce, of course, my cohorts, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Adrian A. Money Biddle. Hey, hey, appreciate the intro, my brother. Appreciate the intro. Glad to be here with everybody. I'm looking forward to our special guest this evening. And I would be remiss if I don't acknowledge one particular thing that just mm. recently happened, a, a milestone, I might I might put it. Mm. Uh, I think on August the 14th, it has been four years. Four years? Wow. Four years since wow. the round table has been a show. So congratulations, wow. everyone. Yeah. That's awesome. Another four. Round oh, it is another another 40. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. let me give the introduction to uh the lady of the house, the, uh, the the one that holds everything together, the 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 grandma of the house. Well, excuse me, not the grandma of the house. You, you like you like you like <laughs> you trying to start some stuff now. <laughs> nah, nah, I mean, you know, oh, wow. what I mean is like the the wisdom of like big mom. She's oh. the one that she she's the glue of the show. All so right. Give it up for Miss Pit Duel. Thank you, A yeah. Money and C D. I am so happy as always to be here on a Wednesday because I get to be with my brothers, get to see our family or at least read their comments. I know they're with us. And when we have a guest, it's just an extra, extra special treat. Mm-hmm. Wednesday means that we are in the middle of this week and we are almost done to the weekend. So I'm yes, excited yes. as hell. So awesome. gotta just throw it back at my man CD, the one who stirs the drinks. He always throw in a curveball and uh, let him introduce our phenomenal, excited guest this evening. Yes, ma'am. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, it is a truly a pleasure to... Uh, to be on again once again y'all and and i'm gonna tell you i gotta give a quick shout out to tangy who yeah. brought this brother to the table and as y'all know yeah. many times when we bring people to the table uh it, it's informative it's mm-hmm. engaging and you just don't know what's going to happen and you could be blessed from it and i think this is no different as i get to introduce the man himself who's going to teach us and actually encourage us mm-hmm and share his testimony. It is Mr. Lorenzo Williams. What's going on, brother? Salute. Hey, how y'all doing, man? It's just an honor to be here. And I just want to sh- send a shout out to Tangi as well. Thank you, Tangi, for being such a, a great support to me and my family. Well, we really appreciate you. Yeah. I see oh, a picture Tangi. over there. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Tangi, on At The Round Table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there go Charlie too, y'all. You hey, know her. Charlie. Wow. And shout out to the people on Instagram who's joining us. Thank you for joining us on At The Round Table Podcast show. Uh, Olive Daali, thank you for joining us. Uh, stay tuned. We have our special guest. He is Mr. Lorenzo Williams. You are about to be blessed. He is about to share with us a story, a testimony, and hopefully you can learn something from it and be encouraged along the way as well. Ms. Crawford, thank you for joining us. Ms. Crawford. All right. So who wants to go up first? Oh. I'm not even going to say that. I know who. This ain't our house. Mm-hmm. She in charge. It's That's still right. her birthday week. Go ahead. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I just mm-hmm. want Mr. Williams to to just be, you know, free form. You know, we don't have a lot of format and we need, we are very organic. So I would like for Mr. Williams just to, just to start. How okay. and who 
you are today? How did you come about being this man in front of us this evening? Well, um, thank you for allowing me to be myself. I appreciate that because um, I'm not real good at uh, uh, being anything other than that. So I appreciate that very much. Um, well, we are uh, in a place in our journey, my wife and I, um, just a little bit uh, under two years ago, um, I was given four months to live. Um, um, this is not my first battle. Um, I also had a battle at the age of 18. Um, I had a, uh, a cancer of what we call a lymphoma, which is a cancer of the lymph node cells. Mm. And um, I had a big knot in my neck and you know, parents rushed me to the hospital and, and uh, we found out that I had uh, uh, lymphoma. And they had to do a major surgery on me and take my spleen. Well, according to their information back then, they had to do a major surgery on me and they took my spleen out from me. And um, then I had a radiation treatment um, put in my body. Um, the interesting thing about that was after I, they took my spleen and over the years I had been having, you know, complications all the time. Um, I really couldn't explain them explain those complications because there were some some other things that was going on in my life and so i really couldn't explain it but um long story short the radiation treatment that i received back then um it ended up destroying my thyroid i had to have my thyroid completely removed um because they shot the radiation treatment into my chest mm. and it destroyed my thyroid not only did it destroy my thyroid it destroyed the muscles in my chest and in my back. Um, and <clears throat> the interesting thing is, is when they gave me the radiation treatment, the, the radiation didn't destroy my thyroid until my 40s. I had, I had radiation at 18. That's how long the radiation continued to work. And these are things that, um, you know, if you're, not, if you're not versed on, you just don't know these things. And these are things that I found out later on as I began to uh, do my research and learn some things. So, you know, I went on with life. Um, at that time, in my, in my, at my 18 years old, I had, um, you know, especially coming from uh, the, uh, our culture, a lot of times we have uh, what I would like to use as turbulence inside of our homes with our families. And, you know, mom and dad had some things going on and, and it, it just caused so many different things. But um, I ended up uh, going through life, but all the time I, I was never really uh, to my fullest in terms of nutrition in my body. Mm -hmm. um, so years later, they ended, I ended up losing my thyroid. And then I started having some, um, some, some spotting, like, you know, like blood here and there um later on in life um, and then it just kept getting worse and i didn't know what it was you know what was happening to me and it just kept getting worse and around 2018 um when i met my well i met my wife to now Danarese. um i met her and you know i began to tell her that these things were happening to me and so we went to get checked out and the doctors kept writing us off as if though it was a bladder infection so I went, I went months, guys, thinking that I had a bladder infection, and then I started urinating out blood clots the size mm. of a of a of a, a fifty cents piece. So imagine going to the bathroom and standing over the toilet and uh, urinating out a blood clot, not just one, but coming out back to back of one another at the size of a 50 cents piece. And so I, I, I you know, uh, I called my wife in the bathroom. I said, babe, look at this. And my wife was like, oh my God, listen. So we got back to the doctor and we literally had to make them mm. go further and look at my situation. Once they looked at my situation, he came back in and determined that um, I had uh, bladder cancer. And this bladder cancer that I had was a rare bladder cancer. And it was in a, because of the way my bladder was made, uh, this cancer was in a pocket that uh, was hidden that they really couldn't get to. So the doctor came in and told me the only way that they could deal with my situation was, is they had to take out 
my complete bladder and they had to take my prostate from me. Mm -hmm. And so me and my wife went and did some research on what that really meant. Mm -hmm. um, and I told my wife that I, I just didn't think that I could do something like that because that would be, uh, in essence, uh, from my thought process, the end of some of my manhood. Okay. And so we went on this journey. We sat in, we got the news. We sat, went out and sat in the car for about, I don't know, an hour just crying and, 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 and talking about, now, now you got to remember now I've already had this battle and now here, not only this battle comes back, but it's a different kind of cancer mm -hmm. that hit my body. And we sat in the car and then um, we just decided that day that we was fighting. Um, I decided that I was going to fight and I decided that I was going to live. And we, we went on a journey and we began to do research. And we began to um, uh, find out and try to figure out what, we, what was going on. Now, this diagnosis that took place in my life was um, in uh, June of 2018. All right. So during this time, I'm, I'm getting ready to get married. We, we didn't already pay for a trip uh, over in Florida. We're going to have a, a wedding over in Florida. And then we're going on our honeymoon in Hawaii. And then we find out this news. This happens to us. And so um, the we went on a research and we found out. Now, this is the thing that I really want to, I want people to understand that when you go through something like this, we went to, uh, we began to research. And of course, first thing that come to your mind, who? Cancer Center of America. So we reached out to Cancer Center of America. Cancer Center of America told me and my wife that in order for them to even look at my file, that I had to have $25,000. And I had to have a retainer of $250,000 for them to even take my case. You know, on, to on top of dealing with something like what I was dealing with, that was mind blowing. You got mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, we, wasn't, we wasn't expecting anything like that. And so uh, we had to, we, we couldn't go that direction. And then my father mentioned something about Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. So we reached out to Mayo Clinic and Mayo Clinic. Um, um, first of all, I want I want to I want to say this. Um, I'm a very spiritual man, but I have uh, I'm not a very religious individual. I mm -hmm. believe in I believe in the Heavenly Father and I believe in the fruit of the Spirit and I believe that God is the the, the ruler and controller of all things. So. Um, when I got these, this news, I, first of all, I began to, to seek on my, my higher power and ask him for direction. And he began to direct me and my wife on which direction we needed to go. So, um, when, when they, when they did this, when we reached the mail, they, they told us that, Hey, they said, they'll take a look at my file, but we needed to have $10,000. And, you know, that for me and my wife at that time, God has, God has been very gracious to us. And we were able to come up with that 10,000 and we went there and they looked and they saw the cancer in the pocket and they said, well, we think that if we take 10% of the bladder out, that we can get the cancer out of there because this cancer was a, um, it was a, 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 a evasive, poorly differential, uh, it's a long name, sarmacose, it was squeamish. So this kind of cancer that I had was, is, is considered to be a cancer that has intelligence. Uh -huh. you, 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 you know what I'm saying, sister? I didn't know that cancer was intelligent. This particular cancer that I had had an intelligence and it, and it, and it's an, it was a, according to uh, the, the medical terminology, it's a cancer that's a professional at hiding, mm -hmm. All right? So they told me that they believe they could get to cancer. So um, me and my wife, my wife is so wise that I can't wait for you guys to meet her. You know, you guys know I'm here with you. You're in North Carolina, right? Yes. You, yes. you know I'm here. I'm I'm down here right now. Oh, I'm are you? Huh. Yes, I'm actually in North Carolina right now. We came down. We knew that we were having this inter interview, but we we're also um, looking at um, places that we may want to live. With you know, mm. being in Wisconsin with all that cold weather. <laughs> Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> and after everything that my body's been through, the weather's a little rough on me. And, yeah. uh, and, and my, my wife, her name is Dana Reese. She's ready to get out of there anyway. So, mm. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, this woman saved my life, guys. I can't wait till you guys mm. meet her. Um, so I'll follow her wherever she goes as well. And, yeah. and so um, my wife was in her wisdom. She said, honey, we have to get married before, before surgery. 
And I and I said, well, what, what do you mean? She said, no. She said, baby, if we don't get married before surgery, I won't have a say so. I have to be able to, to I have to be able to communicate on your I'm telling you, man, listen, I have a whole new level of respect for the sisters, man. Um, um, we, we need the sisters um, and we need their wisdom. And, I, and, and the Lord blessed me with a very wise sister. And so we got married on July 22nd. I got I got my diagnosis on the 6th of June. We got married on July. This is how serious they wanted to get to this, this surgery because the cancer was was spreading. OK, so me and my wife at that time, we decided we came. This was some down. We just started doing research. We began to look at naturalists. And, and you know, I got I got to give a shout out to Sebi uh, because we, we, we looked at Sebi's um, 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 program and we implemented some of his understanding into into our, our, our regimen. Mm -hmm. And um, so we got married on the 22nd and then we rushed to, to the Mayo Clinic. I had surgery on July 27th, major surgery. Wow. So me and my wife have not even yet, I'm, I'm, I'm still in my recovery process because first of all, the cancer did a job on my body and mm -hmm. still recovering from some other things. So me and my wife, we haven't even yet, we have yet to even have a reception from our marriage yet because we, we've been battling all of this time to get me back to where I am right now. So we had the surgery and instead of taking 10% of my bladder, they had to take 20% of my bladder mm. out, of, out of my body. So then we stayed over there for uh, a couple of months and things wasn't going right. We were communicating. We wasn't, we, we, listen y'all, I'm telling you that I don't know if it has to do with our color or do it have to do with the type of insurance we have? But I'm telling you that there is an issue when it comes to communicating with us, when it comes to these doc to doctors, when it comes to, I mean, we were, we were blessed because we all know that um, at the end of the day, God is in control. And when he got your back, ain't nothing nobody can do to you. That's and, right. And so um, the cancer returned two months later. Mm. When the cancer came back, it spread it to the lining of my stomach and throughout my whole left rib cage of my body. Mm -hmm. And at that point, um, around <clears throat> the cancer return on around, well, I was having some issues and they had to go back in and, and look for the cancer. Okay. So then they, that's when they found out it had spread it. And then uh, on, um, was it October 19th, I believe? around October 19th, I was around October 19th is when they told me, um, I came into the office with my wife, my mom and dad was there back in Wisconsin. Uh, the people at Mayo didn't tell us, but they told the doctor there. So no, we didn't even know that I had been given a death sentence mm. until we got back to Wisconsin. So the doctor comes in and he's talking to me and my wife and he tells me and my wife um, that, um, what am I, he asked me a question. He said, what are you gonna be doing for the next um, couple of months? What's, what's your plans? And I'm saying, hey, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, well, what's your plans? What are you gonna be doing? And we said, hey, just tell us what's going on. And the, and the gentleman said to us, um, I have to legally tell you six months to a year, but I don't believe you'll make it past four months. Would, mm -hmm. you, like to go, would you like to go into hospice? Mm -hmm. um, now, I wanted to get to that point, but I wanna just go back a little bit. Me and my wife had, during, when we found out that I had cancer, we had already decided that we were going to, um, through our research, we decided that we were going to cut some, uh, make a lifestyle change. Um, so we cut all meat, we cut all dairy, we cut all sugar, we cut everything that had anything that, that, that could cause mucus in my body. Mm -hmm. And we decided that we were not going to fight cancer. Okay, so we never fought cancer. We never tried to fight cancer. The only thing that me and my wife decided to do was build nutrition into my body. So we focused on nutrition, putting nutrition in my body, and we only put those things that we found that would fight against cancer in my body. Listen, guys, this was not an easy journey. You know, after being, we had to relearn everything. We, as a matter of fact, before I had the surgery over in the Mayo Clinic, we we decided that we was going to stop the cancer from moving. 
by changing the diet. And guess what? The cancer did not move until we got back until we got to the Mayo Clinic. It stayed, it stayed, it stayed stagnant. So then um, after um, I had one shot of chemo over at uh, Mayo and I told my wife, I told her, I said that that key, that chemo that, that mess you up. And we, we know about chemo, you know, one thing about the chemo therapy is, is that um, people, people take the chemo and what a lot of people don't understand is when the chemo goes inside of you, uh, it kills all of the bad cells, yeah, but yes, sister, it, it, but it also kills all of the good cells. So once the chemo's done, you have no you have nothing else to fight with. So mm. if the cancer comes back, you have nothing to, you have no, what my wife would call warring soldiers in your body anymore. Mm. Because the chemo have killed all of them. So we, um, I told my wife, I can't do it. So we turned down chemo. We told them, as a matter of fact, they had, at, while I was at the mail, they, they had tons of doctors coming in my office because they knew that there was something, they knew they had messed up really, to be honest with you. And they put fentanyl patches on me. They had, I was so delusional. I was delusional. I, I, I didn't know where I was. And my, I told my wife, I said, we got to, my wife said, we got to get out of here. She told them to take everything off of me. And I said, they said, they tried to convince me to stay. And they said, and I said, well, whatever my wife's saying that we're going to do is what we're going to do. We got out of there. We got back over here and we, um, we just uh, went, we stayed really, we went really, really hard once they told me that um, I wasn't going to be around here. And we, we uh, just changed our complete diet. Um, we, we put all of those things that, um, that would just fight against cancer in our, in our body. And that's, that's, that's a part of what we did to, to do that. There's so many people that's suffering. Um, so what we have decided to do, uh, we came up with a regimen that we have that or that helped that we that we came up with our regimen we can specifically for our body so what we found out is is that every individual situation is different everybody has a, a ailment we 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 personally we don't believe that there is a such thing as cancer we don't believe that there is a such thing as diabetes we don't believe that we believe that these are names that was given by men to cause fear we believe that any ailment that a person has in their body is because they have a low immune system. They're lacking nutrients in their body. And we believe that if we can get the right nutrients in an individual's body, that their body will begin to reverse itself and fight back with those soldiers that my wife speak about to correct what's wrong. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I know, right? right? Yeah. So, I mean Long story short, they're calling me a miracle right now. At the Mayo Clinic, they've acknowledged it. We have the, they, they're telling me right now that there is no one that has survived the type of cancer that I had, that I had. They're, they're, I'm, I'm the only survivor that they know of on record that have survived the kind of cancer that I had. So what do we say to that, guys? <laughs> wow. wow. That's what I'm saying. Wow. <laughs> that, wow. That that is a lot to unpack just hearing all of that information and yes. the journey that you've made up to this point. But yeah. if you don't mind me asking, Mr. Williams, just to go back a little bit um yes, with your first with your first situation with cancer. Because mm -hmm. I believe that it helps build it, it's building the foundation to the person that you are right now. At the age of eighteen when you were first diagnosed, I mean that's the prime age of living. So when you when you actually received that information, what what was your mindset, or what what helped strengthen you to push through that diagnosis? You know, um, like I spoke, you know, back in those days, there was so much going on, you know, with with you know with family. You know, remember back in those days, you know, we had high level uh, uh, factory working jobs, and and things were going. And then they took all that stuff out of our communities, and it affected our parents. And it affected everybody around us, which caused turbulence in the home. So uh, when I was diagnosed with the ailment, um, you know, there was there was a, a, some division that was taking place at the same time. So I was so confused as a young man going through something like that. Um, I was uh, I was in the streets. And so I stayed into the streets a long, long time, even after uh, the, the cancer. Listen. Mm -hmm. I was so discombobulated 
that I made up my mind that I wasn't even going to finish. I never finished radiation treatment at 18. I stopped mm -hmm. going. I got really sick and my dad rushed me to the hospital and the doctors came in and said that they can't find cancer in my body anymore. You know, mm -hmm. and that happened to me back then. But mm -hmm. my, my mental, my mental instability, listen, they shot the radiation and we all know what radiation do to you. It, it blackens your skin. It takes your hair out. At the age of 18, man, I was walking around with all my hair out in the back of my head and my neck was black as, as, as tar. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't even realize until I got a little bit older, just recently, when we started dealing with this matter, how humiliated I was as a young man dealing with something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, it was it was a it was a, 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 a heck of a journey, um, sir. Um, and it was a trauma um, mm. in, in my life, but uh, I made it through it. Um, I, I tell you that 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 thyroid, even even with the thyroid being taken from me, and you know, there's so much I didn't I didn't have I wasn't educated. Mm. I didn't know what the purpose of the thyroid was, mm. how important it is to the centering of you. It's like a centerpiece in your body that regulates so many parts of you. Mm -hmm. You got what I'm saying? So yeah. it was a lot. I like to compare the thyroid to an alternator in a car. Mm -hmm. Because any and all things for all the systems in your car, the alternator has, it regulates and distributes those That's jokes, good. that voltage. And so our thyroid has the same properties with different chemicals to make sure that our systems function properly. And it's, it's so, I am a, a, our cancer plagues my family on, on mm -hmm. both sides, maternal and, and paternal, Mr. Williams. So okay. just to hear your story, um, mm -hmm. it, it brings up uh, memories. My grandfather passed on my mom's side. My mom passed from cancer. I have two family members who's battling different types of cancer right now, uh, which I told them, make sure you guys tune in tonight. Um, we have a lot of survivors of cancer, um, but it, it is, it's always a, a fear that a diagnosis is coming. And if it gets me that it, you know, I hope it, that it prays, it doesn't, you know, become a diagnosis to my children. Um, the nutrition mm -hmm. is kind of what I want to dig into more um, because God definitely has given you this so you can bring it to others. And you have mm -hmm. a queen that is just as passionate, um, just as serious and willing to research and get knowledge to help build what you guys are doing. So what is it out of this blessing and out of this gift that you have now put together for others? Okay, so we, we do have, uh, and a lot of this stuff is in, in, in my upcoming book that we have, um, and we have two books coming out. The first book is kind of talking about my journey that, that we went on, um, and then the next book is we're, 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 we're spelling it out. In the next book, we're going to spell it out and help people to, uh, to fight this, but I want to I give you some things and, and based off of, you know, and I have looked at some of you guys' episodes, and I, and, and, and by the way, I, I was really, really impressed by, I looked at a couple of your episodes, and you guys are really sharp, and um, and I know that you guys are also knowledgeable of some of, of, some of this stuff that, I, that we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that I will say first um, that I would like to say is I believe that um, when it comes to this type of thing, anybody, I can see how someone can walk into the doctor's office and get someone tell them that they have a short time to be here and that they walk out of there and receive that information. The mm -hmm. first thing that I, the first thing that I would like to say is that I believe that some people don't understand where I'm coming from, but I believe that the biggest part of, uh, uh, first of all, you have to give, uh, uh, put, put everything in the creator's hands, but the, the, the biggest part to this is your thinking. I never, ever, ever received death. Mm. I never received when, when they, uh, now, now you have to, we have to live in reality, 
we received, we, we knew that there was a diagnosis. You understand what I'm saying? We knew that there was a diagnosis and we accepted the fact that something was there, but I never ever received. There's no man that can give me a deadline. Mm. So I never received the man's deadline, first of all. So my thinking, I never thought death. I've always, um, always thought that I was going to live. I never accepted death. Um, secondly, when we began to do our research, we found out this is very important. We found out that most sickness or all sickness is due to an over or imbalance of mucus in your body. Mm. Okay. All right. One of the things that we know for a fact is we should not be drinking milk because mm. if you're drinking milk from a cow, mm -hmm. a cow has eight stomachs. Mm. Cows don't eat meat, they eat hay. All right. And then we have to understand our history, how we ended up drinking milk anyway. And most of the reason that we end up drinking milk was because our milk, our natural milk, was mm. being stolen from our sisters. Yeah. Mm. And we were giving cow milk to substitute mm. what milk was naturally given from our queens because it was being mm. stolen from them, given to uh, others, and they were substituting us with cow milk, which we were never supposed to be drinking anyway. All right, let's start there, mucus. So when me and my wife uh, feel, feel that, and I want to give this because this is the thing that I want to give uh, out right away because I want to answer your question. First of all, whenever you have anything going in your body, you have to have a, a, a reset. Okay. What mm -hmm. is a reset? Religion uh, calls reset fasting. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. But a reset fasting is really designed for you to bring your body under subjection and to cleanse yourself. So me and my wife had already decided that we were going to cleanse our bodies of all of the stuff that we were used to having in it. All right. And mm -hmm. then we begin to replace that stuff with, with all natural substance that we begin to put in it. So I'm going to name a few things and, um, uh, Miss Pitbull, I, I got to, uh, uh, you, you have to understand that this journey that I have, I, I, that I'm going to give some things and then I'm, and I know that we're going to build the relationship out after this. We have to, um, and, um, but I'm just going to name some things that we did. Okay. Uh, we fasted and, uh, and I want to, you know, my wife's so cold. She got me with postcards and, and I, I, <laughs> things, man. I can't wait. I want, I want you guys to meet my wife. You got to meet her. I'm gonna have her uh, stick her head in and say hello if that's okay oh, yeah. with y'all. Yeah. Yes, 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 you better. Yes. But um, 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 I have a whole new level of respect of what a uh, union is um, mm -hmm. and, and what, it, what it means and what a help me means. So uh, I, I just want to shoot a shout out to my sisters and my wife. Hey, we need y'all and we love you. Y'all the best. Um, but fasting promotes blood sugar control. It reduces it, it reduces the insulin in your body. It improves blood pressure, it improves cholesterol, it boosts brain function, and it, it boosts your metabolism, and it gives your, listen, this is what's most important, what, what we found out. It's very important that you learn how to give your liver a break, because your liver controls so many functions in your body, and when you fast, it gets all of those bad things out of your liver, and it gives your liver a break because your liver uh, it, it releases so many different things in your body. Mm -hmm. All right. So first things first, what kind of water do you guys drink? You know mine's, what I'm talking about. Mine's is normally filtered. Filter water. Mm -hmm. filtered. Yep. Water. Well, what we found out is, is your body is made up of alkalinity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of waters that we drink and the waters that we're drinking adds to the acid that's taking place in your body. All right. Mm -hmm. So what we should be doing is we should be after what is called a pH balance, mm -hmm. the highest pH balance of H2O or water that you can get is a 10, but most likely you only can have the only thing that they'll give you access to 
if you don't have the extra knowledge or the access is a 9.5 in the alkalinity of your water. So the body needs alkaline, mm -hmm. all right? So we decided that the only thing that we were gonna put in the, in the body was alkalinity. So you want, you want to drink, if you can access it, you want to drink what what we understand today is alkaline water but it's alkaline water is not new it's, it's not. been around it's been around for a long long time just like another thing that's not new is kale you remember mm -hmm. when you went to the store yeah bro mm -hmm. you remember when you went to the store and we would go and get lettuce and we would look up at the kale and be like Ugh. yeah and then, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then and then and then the other other individuals will go in and they would be buying the kale. Well, they knew all the time that the kale was anti antioxidants for your kale is oxygen for your body. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your body's nothing but one big pore. Okay. And so that's why you have to be conscious of what's being put in your body because your, your body is one big pore. So alkaline water. And whenever you're dealing with any sickness or you're dealing with situations, you need to be drinking like, like for instance, my my wife had me on a regimen where you have to drink. We oh, I'm for my wife something else. The I was drinking half, I know, right? <laughs> a gallon and a half water a day. Ooh. I also drink two gallons a day, but right now, I've been slipping a little bit. But I drink a little over a gallon a day of water of alkalinity mm. because you need to cleanse your body out, especially those people that's on medication. See, mm. the thing is with people that's on medication, they're taking these medications and you have to get that out of your body. The only, the fastest way to get it out of your body is by flushing it. True. And that's one of the things that we don't do is we don't drink water as much as we should drink water. Mm -hmm. So we we need to drink a lot of water. So, so, uh, so uh, Ms. Poop Bull, with, with the issues that's going on with the people that you have in your family right now, first things first, thinking. They have to, they have to make up their mind that they want to live. Secondly, they have to drink as much water as possible. Is that water you drinking? No. <laughs> it's not alkaline. No, it's alkaline water. It's not, it's, not, it's not alkaline. I'm sorry. I got and, a and old filtration system installed and I just, just well, drink well, I, I think that that's not a bad thing, actually. If mm -hmm. you have a, a system that you've paid for that, that filtrates your water, that's probably the closest you're going to get to the alkaline system, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is we want to talk about is ginger. Mm -hmm. All right. We're talking about raw ginger. OK, mm -hmm. uh, you want to get ginger in your body because ginger uh, contains a component that's a, um, which slows down and cancels abnormal cells in your body. OK, um, it, it, it helps cell growth. It helps nausea. It has antioxidant properties to protect the brain and it, it deals with stress and it reduced. The other thing that a lot of people are dealing with, especially when we, when I, when I was dealing with, uh, when we were fighting, one of the things that we made sure that we did is we had to eliminate stress. Mm. We had to eliminate negativity and we eliminated all stress from my life. And so we, we cut our circle of stress feeds sickness. Mm. As a matter of fact, to be honest with you, we also believe that stress adds to sickness. It can be a, a big part of of that. The next thing I um I heard a I heard a a, a, a gentleman that was on your episode uh, that was very well versed. He spoke of turmeric. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Turmeric is a very very important thing. It's also uh, uh um it it helps reduce the DNA uh, mutating of cancer. It slows down the mutation of cancer in your body. So mm. turmeric and ginger, it should be a real, should be a, a normal daily regimen for us, especially in this uh, atmospheres that we live in, because they are nutrients for our body. Okay, uh, it reduces also reduces stress and it helps boost your immune system. Okay, now I also heard um, on your on your episode, uh, gentlemen talking about the sea moss, which is very strong and uh, moringa, those things are, are, are very strong as well. Um, and, and those are also things that you that a person might want to get. Um, but, but daily nutrition 
is very, very important for the body. And, and just quite frankly, y'all, I just want to commend you for even having something like this, because these are the kind of talks that we need to have around the table. That's right. Is, mm, yep. you know, we need to have these talks because, because no one, no one has really, really been uh, teaching us these things. And so um, long story short, my wife, my wife and I, our, our mission, which is uh, our organization is Journey to a Better Health, which, which you can see behind me. And our mission is to begin to educate and um, begin to educate people more on what it what it's going to take to put proper nutrition in your body. Um, we want to educate uh, uh, our people on, on certain things that we need at, in our in our bodies uh, culturalistically. Um, and what we have decided to do with the rest of our life since this has happened in our life. I mean, um, I don't I don't know what else to say. I mean, uh, one of uh, the pastors in our community who, who I happen to love very much, I didn't really see it like this, pulled me in front of the, the people in the church and said to me, uh, asked the people, have you ever read about a miracle in the Bible? And the people was like, yes. And then he said that this is a modern, modern day miracle. Mm -hmm. So imagine that y'all being a miracle in the 21st century. And so it is my obligation to, to reach back and give. So what we want to do is, is um, we want to commit our lives to individuals. We want to help people with nutrition plans for their life to help them to me and my wife, we go in and we find out exactly what's going on to a person with an individual and we do our research and we, um, we help to build out a nutrition plan specifically for their situation to help them to fight against whatever ailment that they have. And, um, Hey, he gave it to us y'all and we read, we ready. Um, it is, uh, it's not an easy, easy thought. It's not an easy journey, but we've chosen to, uh, to go ahead and, 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 and take this, take this challenge. And so, um, we're ready y'all. So we, we just, we just honored to, to be in a situation like this where individuals like yourself would be open um, uh, to to pr help us promote what we're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. Journey to mm -hmm. a better health uh, yes. is a, a powerful name and it, it just sums it up. Um, you don't need mm -hmm. a, a mission statement. You don't need <laughs> any of that. You don't need a tagline. It, it tells you exactly what it is that that you're, you're doing and, and what's driving you to be in. I think so many people have just accepted, oh, well, that's what so-and-so died from. That's what my granddaddy had. That's what, and so it's hard for us to unlearn and untrain mm -hmm. not only our mind, but our taste buds uh, on things that, that can help us. Um, my aunt joined in, I, I texted her really quick and said, hey, you gotta check out our podcast. And she's one of my my one of my family members that had a similar story where she went to the hospital, you know, on an emergency that Friday, that Sunday. They was telling her they were giving her six months to live, yeah. um, because her gall she had gallbladder cancer and it had spread throughout her liver and they didn't even want to touch her. And yeah. again, because we are a family of faith, and we went into prayer. Um, she was supposed to go in for exploratory laparoscopic um, surgery, and they were just going to look around. They're just going to look around. We're going to see like how bad this is because you know they called hospice, they called everything, they called everybody, and got over there that Wednesday, and they were able to get the majority of the lymph nodes, took the the gallbladder. And what she's being treated for is just a, a small portion of the lymph nodes that they were unable to get with that type of surgery. Mm -hmm. And the talks went from, what are your plans for the next six months to, sure, you can go on that cruise in October. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can go on and do that. Yeah, you don't need to cancel yeah. this. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, being a person, a family of faith, it is so important yeah. to not only acknowledge the spiritual aspects, but also acknowledge that God gave us 
wisdom and knowledge and the ability to gain it. And so yeah. when you have better, you do better. That's and right. so it's nothing wrong with, I'm not one of those people that's just like, oh, just going to pray and it's going to be all right. No, I believe that God gave us prayer for our encouragement and our mm -hmm. endurance. But he also gave us what we need to make sure that we can get knowledge so we can actually make it, you know? Absolutely. And I believe that's what you and your wife um, you know, are providing with yeah. Journey to a Better Health. Like, it's, it's just it's just phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal, you know, at, that yeah. it can be and do what it does. Faith without works is dead, y'all. And, right. mm -hmm. and and we, and see, we, we've been you know, they, they, they have to the work. We've been hooked, wink. We've been bamboozled and all of that, y'all. Not no more. Because we're going to figure this thing out. And we're going to, we're going to, this is what we believe. We believe that if, if the enemy, which we call sickness, if the enemy, which we call uh, the devil, if the enemy can create something natural in the earth that can kill you, then truly the creator has something natural in the earth that can repair you. That's right. And so... Yeah. And so, and so what we're going to begin to do with my, me and my wife's mission is, and we're on a mission y'all because, um, the hook to my story is, is we turned down all traditional medicine after a death sentence. That's the hook to my story. And, um, the doctor that gave me, um, four months to live is now a friend of ours. He told me and my wife that we've changed his life. He actually made a statement, um, concerning my matter saying that he has no explanation of what took place hmm. in my life hmm. even at the wow. mayo clinic that's what they're saying and so um i'm saying this with humility i'm saying that i'm 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 i'm, I'm taking this with the lord or what god has done in my life and i'm going to work for him and we can work for the lord and be who we are he made you who you are to be you and guys and and, and i've watched a couple of your episodes now and i and i and i'm telling you right now that you guys are so you and you can see individualism in each one of you and and i was excited to get on here with y'all today <laughs> <laughs> well that's uh, what we like that's yeah what we like. Thank you. yeah thank you. Appreciate i was excited it. Appreciate it. And, and and we would love me and my wife if if you guys have some we're here we're here in uh, north carolina uh i think i have another interview tomorrow and i think i have two more next week in um in, in north carolina and at some point, guys, if, if you guys have time, my wife and I would love to meet you face to face. Um, and, and, and you guys can come where we are and we'd love to meet you and just shake your hand. And, um, and, and we, just, we just want people like you to support us on this journey and hold us accountable so that we can stay humble and help people and, and get testimonies, y'all, so that we can let, let people feel that they can survive. My wife said to me that, and Tangie said this to me. They said the same thing. They told me that my story, they said that I'm hope, mm -hmm. that I am hope. And they made me cry, y'all. I'm a big baby sometimes. <laughs> I'm a tough guy, too. Nothing yeah, wrong with that. <laughs> oh, we, need, we need more of that uh, now, more than ever. Right, brother. right. Men that um, cry yeah. are strong. Don't yeah, say that. Definitely, don't, don't, definitely. Don't, 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 I'll just be yeah. Shout out to uh, Kimberly Kalima Songstress, our sister. Um, she, she's mm -hmm. been dropping some uh, information. It looks like there's been some dialogue going on. We appreciate that. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's so important. And, and, and I want to say this first and foremost, bro. You touched my heart saying that as far as the, the, the lifestyle change. Um, everyone is no, you know, what has been going on in our lives. Each one of us, we we joke about it, the three of us, all the time. If you go back and you look at shows, we joke about, you know, diet. We do, joke about food. We talk about food. We're all foodies and such. And, you know, I made the huge change in my lifestyle with food. Now, I come from a culinary background. I had to make a large lifestyle change because of my health and what I went through last year with COVID. And, you mm -hmm. know, strictly, you know, vegetables, no meats, no milks, you know, a lot of water. Um, and things of that nature, and and it's amazing when you when you when you take things out, it's almost a sense you find things coming back in, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Absolutely. Um, it, it it you know it changes a whole perspective, and I think you know, so many times, and sis said it so so eloquently, we accept it 
as though it's gospel, but it's not. It's you know, it's just you know, people tell you stuff, but did you do your research? And you you just said it yourself coming on here. We as black folk got to do more research as far yes, as what's brother. going on. Yes, mm -hmm. it's true. It's true. So we appreciate you even saying that, bro. Matter of fact, um, people, if y'all have any questions, please ask right now because uh brother williams i know he's got a plethora of of, of things he want to share with y'all in order to get you to a better health but i would be remiss where is sis where is mm -hmm. this queen that has, has yes. put you where you need to be because i mean yes, we will. I, I might get in trouble not even saying yeah, that from right my here man well, we weren't gonna let that happen yeah we need to talk to her that's my that's my road man <laughs> listen, 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 y'all. Um, um, we we have found. I mean, um, with this journey, we got. And while we were going through this, um, we had um, two. We have two small children. Um, they were infants while we were traveling back and forth to Mayo. Hmm. And um, this is the story. So we got. You, you, you know, the the title of my book is uh, "Keep Living hmm. When Death Is the Prognosis," um, and we my. The story is so huge. We have babies that was that just well, after surgery. My wife put my my daughter was born on my birthday, July 18th. And I check this out. All this was going on in my birthday. Everything this was happening. And mm -hmm. she put she put my she put my baby in my hands. And um, my baby looked at me for 30 minutes straight, y'all, as an infant. Mm -hmm. And it made me go to the creator and say, hey, you got to give me more time. Mm. You have to give me time. I told him, I said, give me 15 years more. But now I got to go back to the table because I'm here, I'm around here. Nah, nah, here. <laughs> <laughs> but hello, this is my wife, Dana Reese. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Yeah. And um, um, I'm grateful. Um, my wife has come up with regimens. We have uh, we have all kinds of... Um, did you want to say something or did you yeah, just say yeah, yeah. 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 yeah 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 and you know, and then yes. someone just put somebody just put some on. That was that's very very good. What this person just said, um, uh, uh, I, I, your support mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. your support system is very very important to have mm -hmm. when you when you're when you're dealing with things of this nature. Okay, which I want to ask my wife, man. So <laughs> queen to queen, I know mm -hmm. it's definitely. Um, Can you hear? To hear the story yeah. is love number one because you weren't even married to him yet and you gave him um the commitment before you had the commitment so you know that that is that's love that is something that is rare mm -hmm. and a lot of people never find it they may be with people but no one and some people don't even know or feel that their partner has their back, that's that committed to them. So how did you kind of wrap your mind around, this is the man that I love, that I know I want to spend the rest of my life with, but we might not have the rest of life. Mm. Well, you know, with my mindset and the way that I think and what God put on my heart is I never saw him leaving. And it's just not the message that God gave to me. Mm. You know, the, the spirit told me that he was going to live, but I needed to be obedient to the downloads that I was going to receive um, from him. Um, and then from either from, you know, from myself, what Lord, what the Lord was giving me. So I just knew, and that was the spirit telling me that we had to be married, right? Because doctors, in my mind, they're good for diagnosis and not treatment, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So when they gave the diagnosis, with all my heart, I knew that God had a treatment, right? So I was already on the positive, you know, mindset that we were going to do what we want to do, teeth and nails to fight. And I wanted to show him 
because of everything that goes on within our community, I want to show him unconditional love. And we don't get a lot of that in our community. You know, there's always love for particular people, places, and things. But I want to show him unconditional love and allow the Lord to speak through him to me and tell me what I need to do as a help me. That's a that's a, that's a phenomenal one right there, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's powerful. Yeah, that, that's powerful. that is very powerful. I want to know when the book is coming out on y'all relationship. I know that's yeah. <laughs> y'all hey, Thank you, yeah. honey, because I'm like we got two books on your situation and how you beat yeah. cancer, how to be healthy. Mm -hmm. I still yeah, see yeah. a relationship book coming on, guys. So go ahead and okay. start getting it. Go we ahead. see that. We okay. see that. You know, one one of the things uh, my wife said to me. Um, that really, really stuck to me when I was in the middle of my battle. Because, you know, being in a battle like that is a real dark place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, you expect certain things from family that don't show up for you, that don't happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, the people that I thought was going to be there, they, they, you know, sometimes people put you in a box and they just leave you there no matter what you go through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And while I was fighting, my wife said this to me. It was so powerful. She said, babe, it doesn't matter how much nutrition I give to you. If you don't, if you hadn't have made up your mind, you wanted to live, you wouldn't have lived. Mm. And I just thought that was so powerful to me for her to say that. And we, and this, and you got me, we had a, we have not been together a very long, long time, maybe what, five years, six years now, six years now, well, six years. We, you know, she was starting stuff in the first few of those years, always starting stuff, but <laughs> but once we finally figured it out what we wanted to do this happened yeah you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so now we're just looking to just enjoy one another and mm -hmm. we've been through it, this is definitely God ordained and we receive that from you because we talk about it all the time yeah um you know that's a whole nother subject but we can obviously see with our own eyes that the enemy's trying to break down the family unit Mm -hmm. with all of the confusion that is presenting to the people out here today. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you guys are right. Uh, it's very powerful to have a support system. And I'm grateful. It is. It is. And your mindset is important, too. You know, just to touch back on the mindset, you know, when, when going through that, his mind was ready for the fight. He was mentally ready for the whatever you know, was coming in, you know, nutrition is powerful, yes, but it won't give the power due if you're not mentally accepting that power, mm. right? You have to mentally be stable and say, okay, what do I need? He's like, well, what I got to do, babe? What I got to, I got to drink this and we'll be, I'm telling y'all, we had some moments, that stuff was so nasty. Yeah, we was, we be up in there like, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, y'all, we got, we got, we got, we got, some, <laughs> hey, hey y'all, we got some serious regimens. Yeah. We got some serious yeah. regimens that we're going to give to people, man, to put in their body. It yeah. don't taste, what we found out during this journey is, is what's good for you don't taste good. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. point. Good point. You know what I'm and saying? You know, and you know the reason why, bro, is because over the years, if you think about it, and I was joking with the kids some time ago and some other people about it, you know how we used to break our neck and be so happy when mom and daddy used to take us to McDonald's? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. just go crazy. That was like the thing to work towards, which was yeah. McDonald's. And you look yeah. at the stuff that they create in comparison mm -hmm. to what you could be eating at home. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. For cheaper. I mean, For cheaper. cheaper. Yeah. It's, it's cheaper. It's cheaper. But then here's the irony. And this is what we learned from Marathi. He, he, I would love for you and Marathi to get together, brother. Matter of yeah. fact, I'm going to try to work something out for the two of you to get together. That's so awesome. Y'all could fool. But it's amazing how we will spend cheaply on food that causes harm to us, but then we complain about spending so much money okay. in order to take medicines and things to get us better from what we just ate, which okay. was so cheap to buy. Okay. I haven't touched McDonald's in probably over 15, 20 years. Yeah, I'm scared. I, I don't even want to yeah. try to even smell it. I can't even, oh. Now, we, we do, we do want to say this now. <clears throat> during the when you're fighting for your health, you have to cut all of these things. Now, I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't say, would you wouldn't say we're vegan? Well, I wouldn't say that we are vegan because um, we do eat meat, but we wasn't eating meat while we were fighting, though. Not mm -hmm. when you're not when you're on a focus point, right? Okay. Yeah. You okay. need to build your immune system so that it will be able to digest certain things, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like sending your soldiers to war without weapons, right? Right. Your immune system doesn't have any weapons to fight, so if you are going in and eating meat. It's not going to even be able to process the nutrition out of the meat, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to get your immune system intact first, yeah. and then you're able to enjoy. And I'm not just talking about any meat, right? I'm talking about the good meat. I'm talking about the grass-fed, free-grazed cows, or mm -hmm. you know, if you're if you're having. Um, chickens right you want to make sure it's something that's organic right mm -hmm. and free range or grant organic is very expensive i know but like you said like i am so for that life because you can taste the difference in the quality right away right, um, right. in the meat so if we do have meat we have certain meat days and things like that um our basic diet though is just fruits and vegetables and that's always where we want to stick to and then we do a certain type of grains, like not whole grains because they've changed the grain strategy. That's a whole nother uh, conversation, but we do like have uh, grains like Amarok, quinoa, stuff like that. Wow. Wow. That's wow. Awesome. my language right there, boy. That's all of Kerry. He starts smiling like, yes. Mm -hmm. I see yeah. my swine didn't make the cut. Well, 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 no, well, no well, swine. Swine didn't make the cut. <laughs> I didn't hear it. 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 I want to point out to you guys, though, that we, we cleanse regularly Correct. for okay. long periods of time. Yeah. Quarterly. Yeah. Quarterly. We Quarterly. cleanse. Yeah. Where we have, we don't eat, we don't eat or do a lot of meat either. I like we do, I do more like salmon. And, and I, I will when she she gives me meat days. Right. Uh, someone said no swine. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you kill. <laughs> Say it again. No, but <laughs> but we but we but what we we just wanted to let people know that we're we're not trying to create an image right. like we're saints or, right. or like we just we just want to be real with you and we right. want to let you know that uh, when, when 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 you're fighting for your health, yeah, mm -hmm. you you have to have discipline. Yeah. If you want to survive, yeah, you have to have discipline. Yeah. And 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 all what we're asking is for people like yourselves is that you help us to push our dream. We're going to create a, a scenario, certain something similar to what you have. And on our scenario, we're going to be talking about healthy eating, mm -hmm. the things that we should be eating. Uh, we're going to have uh, meal plans that mm -hmm. we have together. As a matter of fact, we're we're doing a health. We're doing the nutrition plans for people. Um, that's what we're trying to position our lives for, to do that on a regular basis. That's what we want to do is we want to educate our people on how to fight back. And so this platform that you have, you have to understand mm -hmm. what you're doing today, mm -hmm. what you what, what what Tangi is doing. When Tangi heard about our story, oh, she's on a mission with us. She's all she's all in and all everybody on her team is in because of my story. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to understand that what you're doing right now is you're creating a platform for us mm -hmm. to begin to talk about these things that we mm -hmm. never talked about. Yeah. So this is huge for me today. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful, just like you're, you're grateful for me to be here, me and my wife, we're grateful that you guys set a platform for this. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate CD. It. And I'm going ahead and, and putting that invite out. Uh, when the first book drops, there will be back to talk about that. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll see. If you don't mind, can you highlight um Kimberly Kimberly's um fourth comment from the bottom? <laughs> back up to the top. I thought that was that was a deep comment that she made. It was. Uh, thank you for saying that, bro. Uh, yeah. Let me share this with you guys. Yes. She said two things are highlighted here. One, the vulnerability of a husband to his wife. Two, the vulnerability of sick people to manufactured resolve in the form of RX. This wow. talk to ear popping deep. That's right. Wow. And it is. It is. It is very deep. Um, it wow. Is. Wow. I wanted to ask That's a question. Awesome. 
um and and we're getting close to that time and i hate it when this happens yes but regarding regarding the platform that you de developed and what you're going through right now 10 years from now i want you to share with our our viewers and everyone where do you see because we we, we speak in life and not death Mm -hmm. first and foremost we have to start doing that but 10 years yes, from now where do you see you and your family in this journey right now um i see my family in, in this journey like like for instance um, i'll give you an example uh before i answer my i have a son that's five years old he doesn't really like meat he likes vegetables mm -hmm. he loves fruit you can hand him a sucker and he'll turn down the sucker and say, give him some fruit. What we would like to see, what we want to do is our goal is to reprogram our culture, those that we can reach. We want to do a reprogramming and we want to begin to um, um, begin to educate. And, and, and 10 years from now, what we would like to see is that that we're living longer. Mm -hmm. See, the being the beings that the, the beings that be they know that if we were eating properly mm -hmm. that we would outlive them right mm. all right mm. that's why they're feeding us this stuff mm -hmm. that's why they're putting poison in our communities because they know that if we were putting the right thing so 10 years from now mm -hmm. we're going to have uh people that understand proper diet mm -hmm. proper nutrition mm -hmm. proper thinking mm -hmm. see not only not only is there nutrition for the body mm -hmm. you also have to have nutrition for your brain yeah. mm -hmm. when you're not eating properly yeah. when you're not resting properly mm -hmm. when you're when you're stressed out because you can't take care of your family yeah. all of these things what well, you can't think properly mm -hmm. so we also need nutrition for our men we we need to promote uh, personal development in our community communities like never before yeah. so 10 years from now what it looks like to me is a reprogramming of, of situations where we're not consumed by uh, 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 falsehood in terms of our diet mm -hmm. 10 years from now we're going to be talking having conversations about eating properly mm -hmm. putting the right things in our family people living being more healthier mm -hmm. than they've ever been like for instance did you guys know that you should eat you should be eating peppers yeah. raw peppers mm -hmm. yes all colors yeah. mm -hmm. why because peppers is oxygen mm -hmm. if you're not getting oxygen to your body your body is suffocating mm -hmm. which causes mucus mm -hmm. which causes you to be sick because mm -hmm. your body's not breathing mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I hope I'm asking the question. You got me going. <laughs> I knew it would. I knew it would. Got me going. I knew it would. Going. That's what that, that we need. That bro, we need that passion. Yeah. People need to hear that passion. We right now with COVID going on and people yeah. on the fence about what to do, and mm -hmm. you know they're cooped up in the house and all these other things. They need to start hearing more passion out of people, mm -hmm. yep. especially when it comes to life. And well, I'm a we, big we, proponent of it, especially after last year. I'm a big proponent about life and, and what we do right now, man. That's it. Passion is mm -hmm. life. Uh, Carrie and I both are COVID survivors. My brother had a harder experience with it than I did. And 2021 looks totally different to me mm -hmm. than it did at the end of 2020. And all the things that you were saying, I'm just going, okay, because I'm not consistent. I like start out and I have implemented some things, but I'm not mm -hmm. consistent. And, you know, I can hear God telling me like, how long do I need to give you? I've given you what you need. Like the things mm -hmm. that you are fearing, I've given you what you need. You just need to execute. And I'm proud and so grateful for the execution and the consistency that you and your queen have done because you say, hey, I can look at you, I can look at her, and I can say, yo, I could do this. It's not hard. Amen. I could do this. Mm -hmm. You know? We could do before this together. Before a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. before, before, because everyone mm -hmm. always want to 
run for the, the finish line when their back is against the wall. You know? Right. And sometimes it's too late. Yeah. It's too late. So start yeah. now. Start now. And, 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 that, and that's, I'm glad you brought that up, sister. That's the other thing that we want to focus on is proactive movement, mm -hmm. um, um, which my brother spoke of. That's that 10 year plan. Um, we want we want to be proactive, y'all, and we can do this together, y'all. Like we can continue to keep doing everything we're doing, mm -hmm. but when it comes to this subject matter, we're gonna have to come together and do this. Like um, we're starting, we're doing just to let you guys know, we do like we do quarterly cleanses, and we got a cleanse, and she's the in control. Is I'm telling you, when she starts talking about this fast and this stuff, y'all, <laughs> it's, it's, it's rough on the player. <laughs> <laughs> It's, 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 it, it, you know what I'm saying? It's rough on her. It, 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 she go hard, y'all. She go hard. Mm -hmm. and, and But it's real, though. And the stuff that, you know, the stuff that she creates and put together, that's the stuff we're going to start sharing with people. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I want to just share a couple things real quick that we want we want people to just hear and we want you to begin to substitute. We tried. We did a lot of research. Um, you you want to stay away from the almond milk. All right. If mm -hmm. My wife makes her milk. She makes milk. She makes walnut milk. Uh, as as a culture of people, really the only nuts that we should be eating is walnuts and Brazil nuts. Mm. Most those are the original nuts. Most other nuts are hybrids. Mm. Mm. Okay, um, and so the only real healthy nut that we're supposed to be eating is a Brazil nut and a walnut. My, my children. Uh, when they when when my wife got through uh, naturally um, a birth uh, feeding them, um, she began. My children have never had milk. The only milk that my children have ever had is like walnut milk and Brazil mm -hmm. nut milk. My wife drains her own milk and makes her milk for our children. But when we but when you can't do that, mm -hmm. the, what we just what we found is the best substitute for milk is wal is uh, coconut milk. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, coconut is uh, a natural. It's one of the uh, first uh, nuts. You know how they're they have a lot of hybrids out here. You know they took the walnuts and the Brazil nuts, and they started to um, cross pollinate stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So then they came up with cashews and almonds and all of these different nuts that they have. But um, the original one. Um, was the walnuts and the Brazil nuts. That's how it first started. So mm -hmm. when you have those nuts, but coconut is natural because it's an original nut too. It's a little bit different and it tastes different. Of course, we know that cashews are delicious. All those nuts are delicious, <laughs> right? And then when you think about walnuts, you're like, oh, it's bitter. And, <laughs> and Brazil nuts ain't good either. I'm just going to be real. They're, they don't taste those. good. But, but it's, they don't taste good because of our taste buds. When you go on a fast, like when we're fasting, things taste different when you get sugar and dairy and all that stuff out of your diet, right? Mm -hmm. Once you, like when you get into week two, I'm talking about cucumbers are sweet, peppers are sweet, right? I don't care what, you don't care what it is. Water, Brazil, it's all delicious. <laughs> and sweet, you like, just give me something to eat. She right. said she said for her cashews. <laughs> hey, listen, guys. Have you ever looked at a have you ever looked at a walnut? What mm -hmm. does it look like? It looks like a brain, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Walnut is good for brain function. Yeah, it sure yeah. is. Yeah. It helps it helps the functioning of your brain. Yeah. Um, the other thing is um we want to cut out all sugars, guys. Yeah, that's uh, so what we found is agave. <laughs> Sorry. Uh oh. I, I gotta go. put my church finger up. <laughs> We pretty we pretty much we pretty much put away um yeah. the, the, the sugar, yeah. syrup, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Agave is also a natural plant. Yeah. It's a sweeter and it tastes great, y'all. Yeah. It tastes just as good as sugar, it tastes just as good yeah. as syrup. It's really good. So we use only agave. When we mm -hmm. sweetener, okay? Mm -hmm. Agave. Agave. Or um, maple syrup too. Maple is also from a plant, a maple plant. Maple is not that bad. But I mean, if you you should okay. save the sugar for like if you having a big event like a wedding or okay. reception, you know. But on every day, we don't even we don't have sugar. It's all that's all agave is our sweetener for whatever it is we're using teas or whatever 
whatever it is we're drinking, we just it's a it's a god thing. And then you want to do and then you want to do uh more raw, raw, yeah. steamed. You don't want you don't want fully cooked vessels. Yeah. We found out that you know like the greens, we love greens and all that stuff that ain't mm-hmm. that has no nutrition. None. Um, maybe some collard green, but what we what we found out is, is you know where all the nutrition is mm-hmm. after you get through cooking them greens. The and you know, yeah, the, right. the green, the, the, that's the nutrition. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the nutrition. All, everything that's in the pot that we don't deal with, right. that mm. we don't take, that's where all the nutrition is. Yeah. Mm. And we stuff it just with a big old plate of greens, and there's no nutrition in it at all. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we and then. Before we get off, before you guys finish up, um, we we definitely wanted to. The COVID is a real sensitive thing, guys, and uh, we're not telling anybody what to do or not to do. Uh, after what I've been through in my body, and and for them not to really really educate us, uh, Steva, baby, I'm answering right now. Okay, um, for us not to uh, um, know what's really really in it is a problem for me and my wife. But what we would like to say is, is that, uh, you know, they get ready to, they get ready to turn it up. They get ready to turn it up on a whole nother level again, y'all. Mm. And um, we better get, we better be focused on nutrition in the body. Okay. Because the way they get ready to turn this thing up, um, population control is a real situation. And the, and the mission is real that, that, that they own concerning that. One of the things we got to let go of, y'all, is we have to let go of dairy and we got to let go of fried fu- fried foods. Mm. <laughs> listen, y'all, listen. Y'all better hold me. Y'all better hold me in this chair. Hold me. Come on, listen, y'all. Well. I can't listen. have no fried chicken. Just a little bit of fried chicken. We got, you, know, you know, this is what we'll say. We'll say this, that, that it's a process. Yeah. But this is a process that needs to happen. Yeah. Listen. We get ready to see some stuff that we've never seen before. Yeah. The way that these people was playing. Mm-hmm. Listen, just like uh, you'll you'll see you've seen people get done in the streets. Yeah. They're not just doing that stuff in the streets. They're doing that in the medical field. All right. Y'all get y'all reading y'all reading y'all reading the lines. Mm-hmm. And who you think the first people is that they after? They is not playing with us. Okay. Yeah. So you want to fight? You want to you want to work harder? You want to increase your water? intake why because you want to flesh your body out regularly you want to mm-hmm. eat and drink alkalinity mm-hmm. kale is high in alkaline yeah what else yeah. sweetie uh kale you want to have um cucumbers you want to have um i can do this a list up here but yeah right here avocados mm-hmm. um there's other herbs too like Sarsaparilla and burdock root—it's um, a lot. But, but you know, this all of this stuff is going to be on our website. Yeah. You know, these type of things is going to be there. Yeah. Um, and we—that's our goal. You know, um, we, we're praying that the Lord uh, turns up, turns things around where uh, our journey can provide for our family, where we right. can just focus on this. Yeah. Um, okay. um, and, and we believe in that. That's what He's going to do. And we need that in our community. We don't have it. Right. We need it. We 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 have a lot of people want. They really want us to do a cookbook too. So I'm trying to put that on me. Yeah. 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 I think that you know, once a person knows how that it can be delicious as well. It is good. You know, it's yeah. pretty good once yeah. you know. Okay, what ingredients to put and where to have a nice taste. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, we've shared some of our meals with family and friends and they're like, man, this, this is good. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know it could taste like Squ- that. Squash is delicious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, she said, she said back there like, squash hey, is no, really I like zucchini. I don't like amazing. the yellow squash. And everybody tells me it's the same thing. One's yellow, one's green. I like yeah. zucchini. Butternut squash. Butternut squash is the bomb. Butternut squash is your friend. Yeah. I've had butternut squash prepared like sweet potato, like the um yeah in a pan. Okay, okay. Well, we making some while we here, so we are gonna make sure we make you some so you can come try it. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. We gonna make some while we together. I was telling. Okay, Gary. I'm sorry. 
No, yeah. I was gonna say we should all get together and do yeah, it. we do. We gotta get together. Yeah. I was telling the brothers I was having a moment, had something come up, and I was singing Greatest Our Faithfulness. Yeah. And I just was singing it over and over and over and over. Just that part. Just that part. And I had no idea that the show um I knew what you experienced, but I had no idea that the show was gonna be so impactful. The dynamic oh. of your journey was going to be so, so um, real and influential. And I just feel that it goes right along with the song, Great Is Our Faithfulness. You yeah. know, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Amen. All that I have, yeah. the Lord has provided. Listen, Great y'all, is our faithfulness. If I could tell y'all the challenges that we've had trying to share our story, mm-hmm. how many blocks that we have. I'm talking about even right now while we're here in North Carolina. Yeah. There's been blocks, mm-hmm. but we're we 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 gonna keep on moving. Like yeah. can't nothing stop with can't nothing stop us. Yeah, we're unstoppable. You yep. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. God is in control. Yeah, you know, and we He's got the will. We're yeah. in the, we we in the car with Him. You can't yeah. stop this car. Right. You know. You can't. Okay. I'm, you can't. I'm, I'm, Look at her. He about to go I again. Start again. I just <laughs> again. Let me stop. Listen, Listen guys. Young. We yes. do have to. We have to come to an end. It is the yes. we hate to do this. Oh my goodness, yes. it's yes. so good. But we do want you guys to, if you don't mind, hanging on a couple moments after we um, in our actual live broadcast. Yes. Um, but yeah, I have been so 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 inspired, um, encouraged, um, and and just given a dose of of faith to do what needs to get done the right way. Hey, money. Hey, um, I, I, I no swine. To, no swine. To, no swine. That's my weakness. A good old bacon. Some bacon. Well, get you, for, for now, while, until we figure it out, get you some beef bacon. Mm. Uh-huh. Until we figure it out. Yeah. Until we figure out our journey. Get you some uh, beef bacon. Okay, um, okay. Well, I, 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 <laughs> I'll say <you> this much. <laughs> Um, having you both on tonight has been very inspirational. You ready to and, go? And of whom? No, I mean I'm just saying it's been very <laughs> inspirational and informative. And I, I wish you all the continued success and blessings that come along with that, and yes. keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, thank you, brother. We appreciate that. And now and we just ask you guys to just just support our journey, man, so we can help our people out. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Well, family, y'all heard it here on At The Roundtable Podcast Show. If you didn't get a chance, oh, Kim, you need to stop. She said beef bacon is the bomb. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not even going to throw in how you can have some vegan bacon. We ain't going to go there. But if you get a chance, I want you to share this show with many people after we get off. Um, definitely share it because there's a lot of information that this brother and sister has just given us. Mm-hmm. And stay tuned because I know the book is going to come out because I've seen the cover. And I know he's got a lot more information to give us regarding other things that you could be eating upon. And their testimony in regards to just faith and relationship. It's amazing. It, it's, it's a triple threat right here. And mm-hmm. we've been blessed today because of it. So, y'all, share this show. If you get a chance, you can go to YouTube and watch it as well on YouTube channel. And stay tuned as we prepare for next week with other guests and more positive engagement. It's the People's Podcast Show. We love y'all and mean it. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.